All right, everyone, welcome to this lecture. Uh, in this lecture, we're going to be talking about working with data, uh, doing joins, uh, and being able to catch errors, uh, do lookups, as well as being able to handle those lookups that we find within joins. So this is going to be uh, a very exciting lecture, something very useful as, uh, as you evolve through your ETL journey as you work with data. And why why is this important? Why is this is this uh, the idea of joins uh, very important? If if you've worked with SQL, anyone who's worked with SQL know that it, it's almost impossible to do SQL without joining one table to another table or joining you know one table in one database to another table in another database. Very common stuff. But when it comes to data integration, rarely and, and I mean rarely would you find yourself in a situation where uh, you you ingesting one data from a source and you're just putting it into another source without doing joins, doing transformations, and cleansing and all the things that need to happen. So more often than not, you find yourself where you're getting data maybe coming from one source. You need to do a lookup that could be customer data. You need to do a lookup with the addresses from an address table. You need to validate that. You need to find errors and filter out those errors. And so. A lot of it here really down in making of the sausage. When you talk about making of sausage within ETL, that's what it comes to, right? When it comes to doing data integration, that's what it really comes to. And so really knowing how to work with joins and leveraging that from an ETL process and doing error handling is a, is a very important uh, skill set and a tool to have under your tool belt. Now, we're going to be talking about all of that within the framework and within the context of working with Talent Open Studio, which is what we've been doing in, uh, in this series of lectures. So I'm going to switch over uh, to Studio with that in mind. And we're going to walk through some exercises that would allow us uh, at the end of these exercises, you should be able to uh, work with joins, join data from multiple different sources um, uh, as you see fit. Uh, in your data integration process. So let's uh, let's set the stage for what we're going to be doing. Uh, previously, we talked about creating database uh, connection to databases and things like that. Uh, in this in this session, I have uh, a MySQL instance within my local environment, which is what I'm going to be using uh, for 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 the session. This MySQL has a retailer DB. Now, the retailer DB has a couple of tables in there. It has a customer table. So think about the retailer. Uh, this is somebody that sells. Of course, if you're selling stuff, you need to have your customer information. So we do have a customer information within this table. Uh, just by eyeballing it, a couple of things, customer name. One thing I want to call out here is customer number that uniquely identifies our customers. If you switch over to the right, we have uh, the credit limit so this is a situation where customers are taking credit uh, so just, just a quick eyeball of the of the table tells us some of the things that we're going to be expecting from it now there are a couple of other tables but one i wanted to look at here is the order details so if you imagine you have customers these customers are ordering stuff so this is the details of the order but the details we should have an accompanying orders which doesn't have the details so there we go so we have an order number so and here we have a customer number so it's just, just picturing this in your head right we have a customer table here we can join that customer to the orders table by customer number and then we see an order number here right and then we can further join this order number into our other details table to see the details about each item that the, the customer uh, purchased in SQL, we can write queries to do the joins and to pull data from these different tables. But the question is, how can we do this as part of the ETL? So uh, your boss comes to you and what they want to do is figure out the orders by customer. So we need to build an integration uh, process that would ingest this data, do some aggregations, roll up the orders that are being purchased by customer so that we can push that to another system for reporting. And so what this exercise would do is really to take us through the nine year. If you follow through the previous uh, episodes, the previous lectures that we did, uh, one of the things that we did was talking about metadata. If you haven't, uh, please go back and watch the, 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 the lecture about creating metadata. And in that lecture, what we did was we, we created the metadata connection to uh, and here we have it to the MySQL environment and we also were able to retrieve the schemas and we had that available for 
uh, use in our data integration flow. So this is what we have. We have our customer information. We have our other details. We have our orders information. And now we want to build a job that would read the order, get the details, join to customers, and show us what customers are ordering. Uh, pretty straightforward stuff. Uh, and we're going to go ahead and show how we can do it in uh, within uh, Talent Open Studio data integration. So let's give it a name. In this case, uh, the name we're going to give uh, this as joins. So we're going to be doing a lot of joins. Uh, that name is taken. Let's give a name that isn't taken there. So toss joins. And now we have a folder a folder to a job to work with. So the first thing that we want to do is we have the job. The first thing we want to do is we want to scroll down because we're going to be reading from these different tables uh, as we mentioned in the previous lecture. Uh, we want to bring in the components that we're going to be using to the screen. So in this case, if I bring that to the screen, it knows that's a MySQL input. Nothing to change about that. I want to bring in my orders detail information. Again, nothing to change about that. And I want to bring in my orders. So laying everything on the canvas, on the design canvas. So now what we want to do is get, uh, let's just summarize this. We want to get the orders. We want to summarize the details. We want to roll that up. So do some aggregations. And then we want to join that to customers and we want to push that. So I'm going to be leveraging a couple of components here to expose you on not just bringing in data, but to do transformations as we go along the flow. And each of the things that we're going to be doing is something that you can find available within the canvas. Now, the first thing that we want to do is work within our orders uh, information. If you click on the component, select that, click on component, we can see, take a look at the schema to see what's coming. Actually, let's uh, edit the schema here. We can see that we have a couple of columns that are coming in, order number, product, code, price, age. So what we want to do is roll up the price. We're going to aggregate by the price. And Talent allows us components for doing uh, aggregations. So I can, I usually like typing. So I will just start typing on the screen, aggregate. You can see it suggests the component for us. Uh, T aggregate row. You see it matches SQL group by feature receive flow aggregated based on one or more columns. So if you're trying to do aggregations on data that's coming through, this is what you want to use. If you're trying to do aggregated with sorting, you want to use that below the one below that. So let's just do a simple aggregation. So I'm bringing that component to the screen. And now I can connect this. I can connect my rows uh, to my aggregation component. Now now that I have my aggregation component, I need to tell it what am I aggregating by. I need to go into that component and specify what the aggregation is actually doing. And the way I do that is first, I need to specify, uh, edit the schema to make sure that I have the columns that I need as part of my aggregations. So the first thing that I want to do, of course, is I want to aggregate everything by other numbers. So I'm going to bring other number to the right side. I select that and I click next. I click this arrow to bring it to the right side. Now, the next thing I want to do is I want to summarize it by price. So I want to get a summary of price. So what I'll do, I'll create a new column here, price. To, so I'll call it sum price. So this would hold the summary of the price information that I'll be getting out of this. Right. Very straightforward. When you're doing aggregation, you don't need to bring everything over. You bring in the one you're going to be rolling up by. And then whatever attributes you're going to be calculating out of that, you can you can uh, also bring that as well. Let's let me do one more just for the sake of it. Let's do count of others. You will see what I, what I mean by that. So we have order number coming. I'm going to be figuring out the sum of price and I'm going to be counting the number of items in that order. So we do OK. We have the schema defined. Very important. You're working with T aggregate rule. You always, always, always want to do that. Uh, set up the schema first. Now the next thing is we have to figure out what we're grouping by. So here we come now to the group by section. We click plus and here we can select the item to say, well, I want to group the records that are coming in by order number. If you had multiple uh, 
uh, input uh, columns that you want to group by, you you would select those components, those out uh, those columns here, right? You want to make sure that you bring them to the, the right side, and then you select them here. But I just brought in one. Now the next thing is now that I'm grouping by order number, what operations am I actually performing? In this case, I want to do a sum, and I want to do a count. So let's just take a look. So I want to sum price, I want to count orders. So how am I going to do that? I click on this below. So I want to do the output column name sum price because that's a new output I'm defining. And what do I want to do? I can click on the operation here, function. And there are several functions that are available for me. I do have a count, a mean, a max, average, sum, first, last. There's a lot of functions that you can, you can leverage. So because I'm doing a sum, I say I want to do sum. Now I got to go back and pick the input column that I'm summing by. So in this case, every column that's in the input is available for me to use. So I want to sum by the price of each item. So just reading what's happening here. So I'm summing by the price of each item and I'm making that available in an output column called sum price. The next thing that I want to do, count orders. You know, remember I created this other column called count orders uh, because now I can go in and I can count my order number. So and all of that is being grouped to order. And you can really be flexible with this depending on what operations you're performing. If you're doing mean, max, you can perform all of those using this. Now that I have that coming out in my uh, in my aggregations, the next thing that I want to do is be able to join that data set uh, coming in from my other detail with all the other information that I have. Just bear with me here for a second to arrange my screen. So I want to join that with all the other information that I have coming in. Again, because ETL is always about processing, joining data, manipulating data, and then doing transformations that are happening along along the way. So what Talent offers is a component, and this is something that you should be familiar with this component. Honestly, it's one of the most versatile components that are available within the tool uh, that allows you to join data sets from multiple different uh, data sources. That's called the TH map. Sorry, the T map. T Talent map. So that component is what allows us to do. I just start typing TMAP, it uh, brings it uh, to the screen. Let's click on here. There's another component that's also available. It's called the T-Join here under processing. So TMAP, T-Join. Uh, I'll talk about the difference about this really quick. So I, I already brought the team up, the team up versus the T join. I know that might be coming to your head. Oh, I see a T join here. What does that, what's the difference? Basically, T join is less powerful like than a team up. And I'll show you why. T join really allows you to join from two different data sources. Not like in the case where we have three data sources, you're trying to join two or four or five or more, right? Unlimited data sources, you want to be using a team map. T join will not allow you to do that. And then T map also allows you to filter records, it allows you to get access to expressions and many different things that the T join will not allow you. So, depending on what you're doing, if it's just simple two columns, you definitely use a T join and configure it. But if you're going to be doing more, a T map is what we're going to be using. And in this case, we'll stick with the T map. Now, now that we have a T map on the screen, what else? We need to go in and we actually need to configure that tmap uh, for the data so let me bring in my orders information here so i'm selecting my orders coming in here what i want to do is i want to select my order details to come in if you notice this is the main these are all lookups everything else that i'll be bringing will be a lookup that's something to always pay attention to so you have your your main and then everything else is a lookup. That's why it's a dotted line. So you might be wondering why is this the main line and this is dotted. It's because this is my main record and everything is a dotted line. And this will be very important when I go in there and talk about joins, left join versus inner join and things. So depending on which one is your main, that would affect if you're doing a left join versus an inner join. So before we go in there, let's just uh, click on this twice. Let's call this customer. What I just did was click on it twice slowly. So just click twice, call this, uh, we're going to call this, so we give it a name. I like to give it good names so that it makes my code readable, my flow very readable. Here I'll give it the name, other details. So something very important to do, just click on it twice, very gently, no rush. 
just so that it's very easy to read uh, as you're looking at your flow you can see customer information is coming in now unlike the other components like let's say i'm working with t aggregate row if i click on this i can configure it below here everything i'm doing is just below in the configurations tab but t map is a little bit different when you're working with t map it actually has a different interface you can click on it once and you can see a simple interface here to talk about you know can you store data to 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 disk remember if you're doing a lot of join and you're working with huge data set you can actually spill that to disk that allows you to do that here but if you double click on it unlike other components unlike many of the other components it actually allows you it brings up this interface and this is where we can do joins and really get uh under the hood with uh, how we manipulate that data so here if you look on the left side these are my input data sources and then on the right side I'm gonna configure where the output that I want from my join so one of the things that you see here it actually has a name of the input data sources that are coming in like orders other details customer and this name shows because we renamed it remember we were renaming that flow that's important if I didn't rename it you would just see like row one here or row two or row three that's because you have renamed it so in, if you see that and you're not sure what data is coming in go back rename that that flow so that you actually know what you're working with here i know this is my order this is my order details and this is my customer now we need to do joins that's the whole idea of a team map we need to map this data set so that we can figure out what customer is buying what as we can see we have an order number here we have an order number here so it's a prime candidate for a join what i'll do is i'll click on this guy i'll hold it down my order number and then drag it down over here i think my screen is freezing here click hold it down drag it it's a little bit it's a soft touch just bear with me while i bring that over there and so we click on that hold it bring it to this key uh to this uh, field now we're joining the order number from others to others from details of course we need to do the same thing with customer we have customer number here we have customer number here so we want to join these two fields together so i'll click on this customer number and i'll bring it down over again it's a little bit of a soft touch to this customer number now i have my joins and so if you think about this if you had say 10 100 tables you needed to do joins you can all do these joins uh this way so the question that usually comes up here is well what kind of join is this doing what kind of is this an inner join is this left join what kind of join is actually going on here and you can figure out what kind of join you want to do on each table by clicking on this little icon here on the left on the uh, left side here the team map setting here you can say you if you want a left join or you want a uh, left outer join or you want an inner join so you have the, uh, the ability to really configure that and be and be flexible with it also you can store the data uh temp data on on disk if you're doing if this is a huge data set it we don't want it to read everything to memory you can choose this as true or false depending on, on your needs right and we can do the same for each table so we can select each table each um each table coming in and we can configure the join model for that i'm gonna leave everything with the basic uh piece of it and now that we've joined we can then go to the far right of 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 talent and we can create our output so here i will create an output and i'll call it give it customer orders so we'll give it a name cost customer orders let's be good with the spelling customer orders so i'm clicking on this green button and i'm doing customer orders if you notice there are no attributes in here there is no fields in here to tell me what i need but because i've joined everything i can pull the attributes that i want from the different tables so here i can decide that well let's go into let's hide all of this so let's see let's bring in the sum well let's before we bring in that sum let's do one thing first let's bring in the customer name because we really care about that we want to see which customer is doing what and then let's bring in the sum of the price from this field from this one over here let's bring in the other details and then let's bring in the other date 
right and there's a functionality here to do auto map where if the names were, were similar you can use that but i'm just bringing everything manually one of the other things that you can also do is in, in addition to just bringing uh the fields over talent allows you with a library of functionalities that you can apply uh to uh, each column as you're bringing that data so if you see if i select this i have a little ellipse here that i can click on that it brings up again this expression builder and i have access to a whole suite of of functions that i can apply to my data set as it's coming through so one of the things that i like to call out is the data operations so you can do data operations on it you can do uh you can generate data if you wanted to right you can do mathematical operations and on the enterprise version you can do data quality so you can do like standardized data to convert things to uppercase let's look at this guy for strings let's say let's actually go here to customer name right edit the ellipse so let's look at string handling we can see down case we can see trim we can see uppercase so let's apply uppercase to this name so i'll bring that up there i click on it i select it i bring it up there and i'll replace the value the default value here with whatever is coming in so i'm saying take so string handling convert to uppercase this value that is coming in customer the customer name so if i do that and i do okay and so we can start applying a lot of transformations to that data in addition to just mapping data you can really do robust transformations to that data you can join different tables you can join different uh, uh fields if you wanted to by just simply using the expression builder as well so read up on the expression builder go to help the talent.com there is a, a syntax that allows you to do way more with it so uh, you know joining strings concatenated strings filtering stuff out you can do a lot more with it than i can even cover in this in this part of the lecture so assuming that we've done all of that uh we do okay so now what we've done is we've brought in our different data sets we've been able to do a join using a team app and then we can begin to uh log that to a screen or we can write it to a database in this case i'll just log it to a screen so we can run the job and see the results of that all right so let's go ahead run this job to see what it looks like okay so the job just run there's some warning there but what we can see here so we're looking at the results here and we can see uh, from the joins uh, and everything that we've done that the customer name is now in uppercase and we have the sum of uh, what the board of each item and then the count so basically all the aggregations that we perform in here now is listed uh in our results and that's what we're printing to screen so a very simple exercise showing us how we can get data from multiple different data sources uh, do a join do some do some aggregations do some joins and then write that out to uh the screen now one of the things that i want to show is if you're familiar when you're doing joins there are times where uh you would always you know get good records and there are times where your join might result in you know missed values so think about doing uh, a, a left outer join and what if you don't find the records so, so what happens and we can handle all of that within the team app and that's what we're going to talk about uh here in a little bit so if you go back into the team app what we did here was we created an output to catch the joins that were all good so if we add a new output here we can go ahead and Give it a name bad so we want to cache the bad outputs uh, from uh from the joints there's another option here you can create from a join table customer orders but i'm gonna select my new output so say bad and in this case we want to bring everything that we brought in from here select everything from there bring it below 
very straightforward but in addition to that we can click the little t-map setting here and what we want to do is catch output rejects so if there's anything that is not caught in the joints that we're performing on this side we want to cache those in the output rejects so we want to cache those in uh, the output uh, rejects and set that to true also if there is an inner join that has an uh, that uh, has a rejection we want to cache that in the in the in, the, in this uh, field and set that to true let me step back here in a little bit and what we'll do go back here change this to an inner join and we should change this to to an inner join as well so let me just recap what we're saying here is if you know when you're doing an inner join sometimes you might not find records and if you don't find those records right it means that it wouldn't be going over to our customer orders we want to trap those records and send them down another output called bad so we can handle these records and we can do something about them we're doing the same with just uh, uh you know the output reject as well you can go in here you can put conditions right the way if a condition is not met you want to cache those records you can really get complex with this but i'm keeping this very simple for now there's a lot more capabilities here that can be performed but just keeping this simple for now you can be able you can handle uh bad records that happens from your joint and that's something that you find yourself doing a lot you're ingesting some data you have your good data that you need to send downstream there but there are situations where records don't meet certain criteria. you want to filter out those records send them down a different path so somebody can deal with them or so that it can go populate a different database and you can do all of those within the the configurations of the team map and that's why i mentioned earlier that the team map is way 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 more powerful than just doing like a um a, a join within talent the t join component within talent so in this case we do okay because we've configured a, a separate output here we need to also visualize that output so here i'll just do another t log row and if I come back to my component, if I right click and go to rows, you can see it's telling me that I have another output coming out from here. And you can have as many output as you want from a team map, uh, from a team map join. So in this case, I'll take my bad records and I'll list them to my screen. I'm not sure if I'm going to have bad records here, but we can run them and see what we get. This file might not have any bad records. We'll see if it does. Oh, it does have. All right, so these are the ones that don't have joins. It just prints them out to my screen. So I have 105 records that are all good going up there and then 207 records that I did not get a join. So if it look, it starts from here. These are the ones that didn't have my joins. Ideally, I should be sending this to another database or I should be looking at these records and figuring out why this join did not exist. And the ones that have joins, I can see the values that are in there as well so this is uh, something that is very very common that you have to do you're getting data from different data sources this could be a database this could be a file this doesn't all have to be a database right i'm just using this as an example any of these input data sources could be any one of these data connections that we have available here you could be re reading data from azure redshift or you're going to uh, dropbox and getting some data or you're going to google storage right and you're getting data from different data sources and then you bring them together you're doing some joins here you do some aggregations you filter some good records and you send it that way you get the bad records you send it a, a different way and you and that's how you can really begin to build some very complex and interesting uh, data integration flows using talent so the team map i would really bookmark this if you know if you're not familiar with it bookmark it really play with it get comfortable with it look at the expression builder look at the expression language available in there and that's how you really can you know start taking hold of your data and becoming an expert an expert with this so let's switch back over and do a recap of what we've spoken about in this part of the lecture so we've talked about joins we've talked about you know uh, leveraging the metadata that we created pulling in data using the t map or the t join those are two common things to do joins we can capture errors right and if we have those errors we can send them down uh, a different path which we saw one going to good one going to bad so we can handle those uh, in the appropriate manner we can send them to different systems 
depending on what the architecture of the enterprise looks like. So this is a recap of joints within Talent uh, for data integration basics. Uh, in the next lecture, we're going to switch and really drill down into filtering. We've covered some of this uh, within this lecture, but we want to drill down and talk a little bit more about the filtering and some of the other options that you have uh, uh, beyond uh, filtering using TMAP. There are other components that allows us to do filtering, and that's something that we want to talk about in the next lecture. Stay tuned.